Hi there, girls and boys. My name is Gordon Darcy, and I'm a wildlife artist. And today I'm going to show you how to draw birds using simple shapes. So, I use a, a marker. You could be using a pencil. I'll show you that at the end. And I'm using a flip chart, so it's nice and big for you to see. So, I can do an oval like that. I know over like that. And if I use a heavy marker now, I can turn this into a bird. So just watch. There's the eye, the little white spot. And there's the beak open. Okay. And down like this to the little cocked up tail. And you see I've got a, a little bird called a wren on show here now. So all we need to, need to do now is put him on a, on a, a twig. So one foot like this, three toes in front, and then we could have his other leg down like this, very thin legs. One, two, three. You can see that there's a wren standing on a stick here. Uh, the, the two feet down below. With his beak open, he's singing a, a wren song. His Irish name, of course, is Drolene. Everybody knows the Drolene from Lana Drolene, St. Stephen's Day, the day after Christmas. And uh, he's kind of a celebrated bird because of that. So what I'm going to do now is show you how to draw another bird underneath here. Uh, we'll try um, a very a bird everyone knows, a duck. So put the oval like that. You can see it's kind of indistinct to start with. That helps me. And then another oval for its head. And then we can go use the heavy marker now. There's the beak. There's the, the ducky eye. Come around like this. And put it on the water. You see, I've come outside the line a little bit, but that's okay. The other thing that you'll notice is that I've turned it around a little bit. I did this with the wren as well. That's called 3D. It makes it look more alive when you do that. And we can put his foot sitting in the water there. And underneath the water, it'd be kind of like that. You'd hardly see any detail. And if you want to show that he's on the water, very simple few little curves like that, a few little lines like that underneath, and there it is sitting on the water. Now isn't that very simple? So there you have the wren and Drolene and the duck, Baca in Irish, and you can colour those in to suit yourselves. There's all sorts of colours for ducks. The wren is usually a reddy brown colour, so that's a straightforward one. Now why don't we choose another bird that we're all familiar with, the robin. And we'll colour it in this time. You can hear the great tit in the background going, teacher, teacher, teacher. Put that over there like that. I'll put these stickers on the bottom just to hold it in place. Like this, so the wind doesn't blow it too much. I just have to adjust this round the back. There we go. Now, Let's do the robin. But why don't we have the robin standing on a spade as you'd see it in the garden? So there's his body, there's his head, like a snowman, I suppose, just about to fall over. Now we have to go on with the heavy marker now. So we'll give him this cheeky beak. There we go. Actually, I should use the heavy marker rather than that one. There we go, that's better. And there's his eye, very friendly eye with a white spot on the top. There's his head. We'll come down like that and we'll give him a sticky eyed chest because robins are very cheeky little birds. And then we have three lines for his wing, like that at the back. Tie it in like this. And why don't we show the tail as well? He's got a notch in his tail like that. Now, 
let's have him standing on the on the spade. So I'm going to bring his one foot down like that, and we'll have the other foot over here like this. And then we have the three toes like we did with the wren. One, two, three, one, two, three. And there's a little toe at the back that holds him in place as well. So let's put him on the edge of the spade so as you can see his tail properly. We'll do this now. There's the edge of the spade. Like that. There we are. And down like that. So why don't we put a bit of detail on it so that we can colour them in. I have my colours right here and I'm going to use crayons. So you can see properly. Well, no, let's just do his red breast because that makes him a robin straight away. Um, crayon in his face like that. Down here. Down his front. See it takes a bit of effort to do this but I want to make sure I got the whole of his chest covered in like that. Could be a female, of course, because they look alike, don't they? The wren female and the wren, the, the robin female and the robin male are the same in plumage. I'm sure you know that word, plumage. There we go. Just a little bit more forehead there, and we have this red on him there. Now, okay, let's put a brown back. There we go, there's his brown back. Give him a collapse here, I have to be hold him up. There's his brown back, his wings. Add a bit of brown up there too. Oh yeah, it's beginning to look like a robin now. Now one of the things that people don't notice about a robin unless they're very close to it is that it actually has got a bit of lilac on its plumage as well, just here. Nice. Tinge of lilac there, just like that. You need to be close to see that, of course. Uh, yellow at the end of his beak in there. There we go. Uh, pink legs. Let's give him his pink legs down here. There we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. There we go. Now a little bit of grey under his tail because it, that's in shadow. There's no there's no sun getting in there, so I'll put a bit of grey under there like this. That's just one of the things that you do if you're an artist. You wonder, you think about where the sun is, and is it going to be bright or is it going to be in shadow? Now I want to show you girls and boys about birds in flight, because a lot of people don't realise how big a bird's wings are. And sometimes when they draw the bird flying, they draw it with little tiny wings. Well, a seagull's got very long wings. And when it's standing, it can fold its wings in against its body, like that. And when it flies, it puts its wings right out to the full length. So, let's show you how I go about drawing the seagull here. Let's take that down there. Oh, that's down there. There we go. So, I'm going to start off with the oval again. There's the oval. I'm making a narrow oval this time, not a big fat oval. And then another one for its head there, like that. And let's put the detail on now with the heavy marker. So there's the seagull's beak. And his eye. And his eye will look high on his head because you're looking up at him. You're actually underneath the seagull. So there's his head with his eye. And we'll do the tail next, I think. I want to do the wings last. The tail looks like a fan sticking out the back like that. So now we're ready to do the wings. I'll do this one first of all. We're going to try and make them look the same because they're the same size. So it comes up like that, and then it goes back like that. Look at the length of the wing. Very big. And then we'll do this one down here as well, like that. So there you have the seagull's wings. Take a few marks here, like that. And it tucks his feet on underneath. It's body like the undercarriage of an aeroplane when it flies to keep them out of the way. Now, what we can do is put a few feathers on the wings. I'll just show you how to do that. Long, long feathers here on the wings like that. 
feathers. Now, how are we going to make a white bird stand out against a white cage? That's a tricky one, isn't it? But I have the answer here. Just put a bit of sky behind it. Blue sky. Like this. Smudge it on nice and quickly with my crayon. Leave white bits because there's always clouds in an Irish sky. Is that right? You never get a completely blue sky, or very rarely. It's always nice fluffy white clouds. So I leave white bits like that in there. So there's the blue in the background. Now, remember what I said about the shadows? The sun's on his back, so underneath here is going to be a bit grey like that. You can use your pencil for that. And I'm going to show you the equipment I think that you probably need to do this work, rather than using a flip chart in just a minute. Let's put the feathers in his tail there as well. It's hardly any sun getting under the wings, but the sun might come through the wings. So you get a bit of grey like that and a bit of white beyond. Something like that. Now, why don't we put some colour on his feet? Pink feet. Here we go. Pink feet. And a yellow beak. Now it's looking like a real seagull. So what we'd like to do is just put the black tips on his wings as well. But nearly all the seagulls have black tips on their wings. I don't have a black marker here somewhere. Let's see. Little black tips like that on the wings. Maybe you just some black spots on the on the tips of the wings. Very close to the tips, not quite on the tip ends. And you all know the Irish name for the seagull, don't you? And Fuilan. And Fuilan. If you went out to Colomara and talked to the men there, they, they wouldn't talk about a seagull at all. They'd talk about the Fuilan. So there you are. That's how you do a bird in flight. Remember the wings are long and when it lands, it folds them up against his body so they look much smaller. So, I'm just going to show you some of the equipment that I use here now. These are the markers. I use two markers like that, okay, because I'm using big scale. And I use crayons, which I break into little pieces, see? And you can get crayons like these ones here in a shop. These are quite expensive because they're artist crayons. But you can use ordinary crayons like chublets. They're just as good. You get those in any art shop or any school that have chublets. And let me see what else have we got here. Yes. You're going to be using a sketch pad instead of the, the, the flip chart. There's an ordinary sketch pad and a pencil. So if you wanted to start off, just say you wanted to do uh, maybe a swan, for instance. You, you use your pencil, you draw your oval like that to start with, and then you put a two in front of it like this. Okay, and then you can come down A hey, presto, you can make it into a swan very, very easily. And you can put his feathers all tufted up as swans will do. Like that. And then if you want to do the water, there's the water. And his tail sticking out the back. So a swan's actually a nice easy one for you to do. Shed shadow under there a little bit with your pencil. There's no sun getting in there. A little bit of shadow in there too. How about that? Not easy. So there you are. And remember the crayons, or you can use watercolors if you want, but they're a bit messy and it takes a while to get used to them. And this is my book, my nature book. Uh, you can get that on my website. And there are 60 lessons in that. All sorts of different pictures.